A little bit before two, officers were dispatched to this location on the report of a female that had been cut or stabbed. Once they arrived, they found the female in front of uh, one of the apartments here on this side of the street. Um, she had a very significant wound to her neck. She was stabbed in the neck. Um, There's large amounts of blood. I mean, from what we were being told, I mean, it's squirting out. Uh, the officer grabbed his medic kit from the cruiser. He came over, he started putting pressure on the wound immediately until the medics arrived. Once the medics arrived, they passed her off to him, found out that the, there was a suspect inside of another location across the street. Um, they were given that information. They went into that location looking for the suspect. Um, at that time, he started running out the back door. He was met by another officer who was in the rear. Um, it was at that location in the rear of the house that uh, that officer discharged his firearm. There was one shot. Um, the suspect continued running to the park, um, which is probably about 200 yards uh, from the house. That's where he was taken into custody by our, our officers and OSU police. Um, he was transported to OSU in stable condition. The victim was transported to OSU also, but she was in critical. She has since been in surgery and out. She's um, now upgraded to stable. Uh, what we do know, we had, uh, well, I will say this, none of them are students at Ohio State. Um, what I do know is there was a, another person who was inside of the house. Who, he was uh, not necessarily a witness to the actual stabbing, but there were three individuals, the, the suspect, the victim, and a witness. Uh, they were inside. At some point, there was an altercation between the witness and the suspect. Um, where the suspect threatened that man with a knife. He ran out of the house. We don't know what happened, uh, which led to the stabbing of the female. Uh, once she was stabbed, she ran outside across the street, and that's when uh, officers found her, started giving her medical attention, and from that point, that's when they, we, they went into the house and uh, confronted the suspect. Do you think this was an attempted robbery? Any idea of, into a motive at all? At this point, this, this looks like uh, the victim and the suspect were roommates. Uh, we do not know the relationship. We do not know if there was anything um, romantic at all or if this was just simple uh, roommates. So right now, we do not know exactly what led to um, the gentleman stabbing her. So we've got to talk to her, but she is heavily sedated right now. So it's going to be a little while before investigators are able to really figure out why and how this took place. There were three people in the apartment when the stabbing happened? There were, there were three people at the beginning when the first incident occurred. Um, to what we know, the suspect threatened what we're calling the witness. He ran outside and it was after that where the female was stabbed. So the witness ran outside. The witness ran outside. So it does not appear that he was inside when the stabbing occurred. He was actually threatened with the knife by the suspect first. What kind of wounds did the suspect have, or does the suspect have? So the injuries to the suspect, they were not from a firearm. Um, they, he has lacerations to his arms from a knife. We had recovered two knives that have blood on them in the rear of where the uh, shooting occurred but uh, we've got confirmation that he was not struck by any bullet from us. Do you know who used the second knife? No, we don't know. We don't know if he had one, two, three. We're writing a search warrant up for the residence right now. Once we get inside, then we'll start looking for um, other evidence, but we have two knives that are outside where the shooting occurred. Um, they do have blood on them. Once we get inside, once we have that search warrant, We'll start processing the inside to figure out if there are any other weapons. What's do his wounds look self-inflicted? Uh, we can't say that right now until uh, we talk to the uh, medical professionals and are able to get an interview with him. What's the suspect's name? Has he been charged? Uh, we have him identified right now. We're not releasing that name because he has not been charged yet. Um, and we have the uh, victim identified as well, but we are trying to reach next of kin for notification. In notification. all, how many people live in the home? Or we're in the still, apartment. We're still you know? trying to figure out exactly how many people live in there as um, what the information we have right now is that there are three people at least that live in there. Two of them were home. That is the victim and the suspect. Uh, the witness actually is somebody that just came over here for something else. Um, so we're still trying to figure it out. To answer your question, you're saying 
GX notification. Notification. Just uh, of the injuries and everything. We're not going to release her name until we find somebody that, that knows her. We don't want relatives, family members, friends to find out from here. We'd ra we, want, we want them to hear it from us. What's the age range of the people involved? So the suspect is uh, 22 years old and our victim is 19 years old. Okay, and the witness, any idea? Age range? Uh, I don't have an age on him. And none of them are OSU students? None of them are students. Are they college students at, at a university nearby? Not that we're aware of. There were some mumblings that she was from New York, so has that come into play? We haven't even talked about that yet. Right now we're just dealing with the incident that we have here. Um, it's part of a long investigation, obviously. We're at the very beginning part of it. Um, we've got a lot to do. we got to interview her. we got to interview him. Uh, continue talking to any other witnesses. Do a canvas here. See if anybody else saw something. And, uh, and then start pouring through everything and putting it together. You've identified him. Has he been through the system before? Uh, that I don't know. Uh, At what point did the suspect <coughs> drop the knife or knives? Uh, we'll have to interview the officers and find out exactly when that occurred. Um, that's part of the investigation, so that'll eventually come out. We'll figure out exactly how that happened. But as you know, when uh, an officer is involved in a shooting, uh, he or she has uh, a couple weeks to gather their thoughts before their formal statement. So they will give their statement uh, within a couple weeks. What possible charges could the suspect face? It just depends on the injuries right now. Probably a felonious assault. Uh, but if for instance, if the victim would uh, take a turn for the worse or possibly pass away, then it would be a homicide charge, either manslaughter, murder, whatever. Um, so right now, at least a, f a felonious assault. At this point, do you know if your officer shot intentionally or accidentally? Uh, we don't know yet. Are you asking if it was an intentional or an accidental discharge? Yes. We don't know until we are able to talk to the officer and the witness officers. Once we get their statements, then we'll piece that together and that'll be part of the uh, investigation. Do you where know did where your... the bullet hit? Right now, crime scene search unit will be coming here. Uh, we'll be taking pictures. First thing we're looking uh, to get is the search warrant. Once we're able to get that and detectives are able to get inside, then we'll have crime scene search unit come out. Uh, we'll start doing... Um, like I said, interviews with witness officers, and then crime scene search unit will do sketching, take pictures, photographs, and we'll determine where exactly, you know, about where the officer was, where the suspect was, where the bullet was. Did he come out that back door armed? Part of the investigation, don't know yet. How long do you anticipate uh, Neal Avenue being closed? Uh, this should be closed down for uh, at least a couple more hours, so people, if you're coming into this area, expect a delay just within this block, um, and uh, I would say plan on at least three to four hours, and we'll, as long as it takes to, uh, sure. to process the scene. These knives that you collected, regular kitchen knives, butcher knives, what are we We're talking about? We're not going to say just yet. And you said, I'm sorry, you said the suspect's 22, victim 19? Yep. Okay. I thought it was 22. No. No, 22. 22. Yep. Is that right? Assuming the officer's name will be released tomorrow, 24 hours later. Yep. And that he'll be placed on leave for a few days at least until he's ready to come back? Uh, not necessarily. Um, he, he might be able to have a day or two off if he wants. Um, you know, the suspect wasn't struck, the suspect wasn't killed. Um, so they'll be talking to him and whatever he is comfortable with, that'll be the case. How many years has the officer been with the force? Uh, I don't I don't have that off the top of my head. Veteran officer for sure. Thank you so much. Thanks. All right. Thanks,